Okay, seems like we're recording. Hello everyone, my name is Joel Shoemaker and once again I'm the director of the Illinois Prairie District Public Library. I'm here with Adib Karam who is the author of Darius the Great is Not Okay, which is a young adult novel that we are bringing to the district here this fall. There's the cover of it. Mine actually um, is not in my office, um, my signed copy. I think I have several signed copies at this point, um, <laughs> which, which I've given out to uh, my friends and family to read during the quarantine and um, some patrons. Lots of patrons have been checking it out actually, which is great news. Um, so Adib, why don't you just set it up, um, if you will, by uh, just telling us a little bit about the book, um, maybe set up the plot for us. Uh, for sure, so <laughs> Darius the Great is not okay. Uh, seen here in the paperback edition is uh, about a 16 year old nerdy depressed overweight Iranian American teenager named Darius Kellner who uh, lives in Portland Oregon and doesn't really have any friends and he's sometimes bullied and uh, just really doesn't think much of himself but when he finds out that his grandfather in Iran is ill he and the whole family take a trip to go see him it's his first time to Iran and while he's there he gets to connect with his family and his heritage and make his first like really true friend uh, uh, in his grandparents' neighbor, uh, which is a boy named Sohrab. And he really has a sense of self transformed by the whole thing. And it's very nerdy, full of lots of Star Trek references, lots of tea drinking, and lots of Iranian food, because I'm always hungry when I'm writing. <laughs> Do you, uh, when you're, when you're writing, do you, um, do you have like, it uh, sounds like a lot of authors have playlists that they listen to, specific music, um, or specific rituals that you go through during your writing process? I do. I always have a cup of tea. Uh, usually, I do most of my best writing in the afternoons, and afternoons are usually for oolong. Uh, so I have like several oolongs I have in rotation. <laughs> and I do have different playlists for different projects. I actually uh, mostly listened to Young the Giant on repeat while I was working on Darius. Young the Giant? Young the Giant. Okay. I don't like know it. I'll have to listen to rock. it. Um, there's like led by an Indian American frontman, and like the guitarist I think is Iranian American. And I don't know. They just, uh, I like their sound and a lot of their songs made me think of Darius a lot. So yeah. So the book um, was, it, to me, it was, it was like kind of a quiet book. Um, um, just kind of a, not like super full of action, like a lot of young adult no novels that I read are like a, a post-apocalyptic or something, you know, Veronica Roth or um, all great books as well. Um, did you, um, did you expect it to take off like it did? It would, you know, it won every award on the planet, basically. Um, it definitely did not win every award, <laughs> but it did win a few, which was very exciting. I just have to clarify there, are lot, there were lots of amazing books that came out at the same time. You're right. We'll fact check this later. Maybe right. not every award. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it did surprise me um, that anyone would really want to read a book about an Iranian-American teenager going uh, to visit Iran for the first time, uh, much less it ended up getting such an like, excellent reception. Um, so it still kind of surprises me to this day. But uh, I think maybe it touched on something that a lot of people were feeling and hadn't seen articulated before. Or uh, like probably had been articulated, but had not uh, been promoted as well. Because, um, you know, post the We Need Diverse Books movement, I say post like it's done. It's still going on. But <laughs> since it was founded five years ago, a lot of publishers have been uh, trying to do better about publicizing and marketing stories about you know people who are not white cishet and rich did you um did you have trouble getting this book um published then or was it since it was like after the start of that movement or whatever no i uh actually had a really like ideal kind of dream experience of getting it published i found an agent fairly quickly and we sold the book fairly quickly and uh my editor is lebanese american and she just like got what was going on, had experienced similar things in her life and just um, really helped guide it through the house and the house uh, Penguin uh, Young Readers, um, their president has made uh, diversity and inclusion kind of a big focus for them mm -hmm. um, in like tangible ways that I felt as I was going through the process. Um, 
which I don't know, feels kind of weird and amazing that it happened. <laughs> um, but like there were people of color working on my book at just about every step of production, uh, which is definitely not the case for a lot of authors. And so right. I felt really fortunate and blessed in a lot of ways. So then um, the, so it's June, we're filming this in June and our yes. plan is to have you out here in Happy rural, month, everyone. Yes, in rural uh, Woodford County, Illinois um, in October, uh, which we can't wait. And we hope very much that the pandemic has passed and that can happen. Um, so in between those, that time um, in August, so it's kind of timing, the second book in the series is coming out. Uh, which I haven't seen yet. I'm super excited to read it. I did see it got a starred review already. Um, at least one. I don't know how many, but at least one. Um, All they've told you is the one, which was okay. very exciting. Uh, very, very exciting. So I did you fear did, that it wasn't going to be received as well? Oh, you and did? And it still might not be received as well, but at least there was one starred review. <laughs> Did you set out to, like, did you always know there would be a sequel? I don't remember it being, I don't remember Ooh. it being, being super open-ended at the end. No, I had no idea there was going to be a sequel. Uh, I always kind of envisioned where Darius's life was going to take him while I was writing the first one, just because I felt like it helped me, uh, like, figure him out and kind of give some emotional truth to it. But I never thought I was going to write a sequel. Uh, and so after finishing Darius, I turned my attention to a new book and wrote that book and it was terrible. <laughs> and so me and my agent were like, okay, well, what should we try instead? And uh, around the same time, Dor uh, Darius won the Morris Award and I, had, I was doing school visits and like lots of young people were asking if there was gonna be a sequel. And I'm always like, I don't know, probably not. Like <laughs> publishing's a business. Um, <laughs> And then I did an event with my editor uh, at a bookstore and uh, someone in the audience asked me if there was going to be a sequel and I was giving my usual like probably not answer but she was in the back row giving me the thumbs up and I was oh. like huh maybe I should try and so I put together like a synopsis of what I thought it would be about and kind of across the entire team uh, we were like oh maybe this actually is like the right next project and so that is why we now have a sequel is because the other book I wrote was <laughs> terrible. Did you, I mean, uh, did you write it super quickly? Because it's only been, what, it, I think I read it and we, I was on the Morris Committee, which is where I think we met, um, and that was January 2019, right? So, mm -hmm. so what, did you write it super quickly, the sequel? I did write it fairly quickly. I think it was like two or three months for a first draft and then about six months of editing after that. Um, you know, with a healthy amount of turnaround time, you know, between rounds of edits. Um, but yeah, it went super quickly. Uh, and when it was very like, an, it was a very easy and joyful process, which most books I write have not been. Um, but like, I could see, that I could hold the story in my head really easily. And, and it helped that I knew most of the characters already. Um, and I don't know, it just, uh, it felt like putting on a very, like, comfortable pair of old shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great character, so I can see that being, they're all great characters, so uh, that's super, super exciting. I'm very excited to read the sequel. I can't wait. Um, it comes out three days after my birthday, so I'm considering a oh. present. Um, super excited. Birthday. And so, thank you. And so, uh, so then I also saw that you have a super interesting sounding picture book coming out. Um, can you tell us about that at all? That's what, spring of 21? Spring of 21. I think February 16th? I know they pushed oh, so the date. I'm pretty sure the spring. date is up and I cannot hold it in my brain because my brain has become, uh, I don't know, did you ever play like Nintendo Wii? Yes. And there was the, you know, the Mii channel? Where yeah. just all the Mii's are in a white void with the creepy <laughs> music. That's my brain now. Um, just with uncomfortably long pauses in the music. Um, so I don't know, I don't remember exactly when the book comes out, but it is February something. 2021 yeah. and it's called seven special somethings a noru story and that's about the iranian celebration of new year noru's and it follows a little boy named kian uh who tries to help with his family's haft scene which is a a, a table that uh iranians uh put out for noru's which has like seven different items decorating it that all begin with the the letter s in farsi 
and um, his assistance does not go well and he accidentally destroys it and has to find objects around the house to replace it. <laughs> and it's um, very adorable. I, I love it. I'm really proud of it. And I have a lot of uh, cousins with kids that are all at picture book age right now. So I'm really excited to get Perfect. to share it with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you did not illustrate it, correct? God, no. <laughs> it would all be stick figures. Um, it would be stick figures or um, maybe even just like a flow chart. <laughs> Perfect. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, and so um, but you're obviously very busy. You've got a lot coming out right now. Um, what else have you been doing during quarantine? Quarantine, but I call it quarantine. I don't know. I why. have actually been calling it the quarantines as well. Perfect. <laughs> um, I've been uh, jogging, which is awful, uh -huh. but uh, there's not a whole lot else to do. And um, I don't know, it's been a long time since I've like jogged regularly. And so I had to pull out like my old jogging playlist, which is all from like the late 2000s, early 2010s. <laughs> And so it's a lot of like the killers and Lincoln Park and it's put me in a very weird headspace because I'm like, oh, like Perfect. I was a completely different person mm -hmm. 10 years ago. <laughs> it's feel like metaphorically and literally because apparently all of our cells just like die every seven years, <laughs> like on a rotating basis, not literally right. they all die at once. Right, absolutely. We were born like a phoenix, but like, <laughs> so it's been very weird to listen to all the music I was listening to 10 years ago. Um, I've been playing my guitar quite a bit. Oh, cool. Uh, and... Uh, doing a lot of cooking and um, playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Yeah, I've been doing none of those things, so that sounds lovely. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I do run, run, but I don't, I don't cook or anything like that. Okay. Um, I'm not, not that cool, not that well put together. Definitely don't play an instrument. Wish I did. Um, I ordered so a cast iron skillet like a month ago, and it finally arrived like five days ago, and so now I've now I'm really cooking. It's very exciting. I'm really good at microwaving. So similar, Thanks. slightly different. Um, so then uh, I guess lastly, um, you know, it's a young adult book. So maybe um, what recommend, what would you read? What would you recommend uh, reading right now? Or what are you reading right now? Or what's on the top of your EBR list as it were? Ooh. Um, I, as we're recording this, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, protests and attention being brought to violence against black bodies. And uh, it's hard not to remember that pride was started as a right by uh, black women and trans women and lesbians. And, um, and so I've really been uh, focusing on reading books by black authors right now. Uh, the one I'm most excited about uh, that just came out is Case and Calendar's Felix Ever After. Uh, and I'm also really looking forward to Julian Winter's The Summer of Everything, which comes out uh, in August. Who wrote, what's the second one? Uh, Julian Winter's The Summer of Everything. Okay. He also wrote How to Be Remy Cameron and Running with Lions. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Very cool. Well, um, we're super excited um, in the coming months to read your sequel. Um, buy lots of copies of Darius the Great because we always, um, many of our patrons know that um, we'll, we give away copies of the books um, when our authors visit. Um, so we'll have lots of copies of that. And then the school, um, the Metamore High School is going to be reading Darius the Great is Not Okay um, this fall, either virtually or in person. I'm not sure how that's going right, to work. Right, yeah. So, building. yeah, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens this fall, but we're super excited. Um, thank you again for this interview. Um, it was super fun and My I'm pleasure. super thank excited. To, I can't wait to read the sequel. I'm looking very forward to it. Um, and we'll see you this fall, hopefully. If not, we'll reschedule it for whenever the world yes, returns. Sooner to... or later, it will definitely happen. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Adib, thanks so much for stopping by and, um, Everyone at IPDPL, all of our patrons, um, you can use your service right now. Um, check out Adib's book, though, once again, I think it is checked out. You can get it when it comes back. So um, we'll see you all soon, and uh, everybody stay safe and well. I'm going to 